Since taking out a trainer's license in 2008, George Baker has tasted plenty of success. He sent out more than 200 winners on the flat and over jumps. But I want to find out more about George Baker Racing and about the man in charge. So here are 12 or so nuggets about the trainer. In fact, let's make it a baker's dozen. So number one, the Baker String have recently settled in at their new home. Robert, it's a, it's a magnificent place, it really is. We're, we're thrilled to be here, moved in December. I think it's always quite good to move somewhere in, in the depths of the dark midwinter because then you just see the place coming alive. It's a magical place to be and we're thrilled to be here. Horses have been trained here since uh, the mid-1800s 18, um, and yeah, I'm mean, a great privilege to be here. Whitsbury was fantastic, um, fantastic facilities. The Harper family looked after us wonderfully. Just when this opportunity came up, um, you know, it's very, very comparable in terms of facilities, but just geographically this works so much better and, uh, you know, it's just up to the M4 and away to many of the race courses. And yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of history around this place and uh, very, very, um, very proud to be part of it. Every trainer remembers that precious first winner, the moment their career changes gear. It's Music Box Express, well beaten yesterday, but finds the winning thread today. Music Box Express, the winner. Music Box Express, um, our first winner at uh, Wolverhampton. Matthew Davis gave the horse a lovely ride. Um, yeah, a day that we dreamt of happening, never really thought would happen, and it did. And um, kick-started this whole mad dream. Circumstance plays a big part in all our lives. Less than two years before becoming a trainer, Baker was enjoying life on the other side of the racing fence as a journalist. It didn't last very long, the sportsman, the newspaper, the great racing paper, but you were the Lambourne correspondent, George. There we see you with Clark of the Course of Toaster, uh, Robert Bellamy. Um, happy days. Uh, yes, the, the Lambourne correspondent living in Market Harbour, Leicestershire at the time, so maybe, I'm not saying I'm completely responsible not for the demise. Not quite with a finger on the pulse. <laughs> not quite with the sort of walking up and down Lambourne High Street every morning, but I, now I wrote lots of the features for the paper as well, and you enjoyed writing for it. We had some fun there. I thought, I'm genuinely, looking back on it, you know, being paid to go racing occasionally, I think we were paid, weren't we? I can't remember. But um, being paid to go racing and writing about it was yeah, my second best um, dream job. I, there was no way I was ever going to train resources and, and just, now look at And just think, if it had survived, you might not be training. I, if it had survived, we, we'd probably still be there, churning out the, the great words. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the Almost, words, yeah. the words, yeah. Amongst the many high-profile owners at Manton is a man seldom out of the headlines. They don't come much bigger than the recently retired Man United Supremo, Sir Alex Ferguson. Uh, he's been a great supporter of ours from, from the beginning, yes. Um, he, he sadly hasn't been here to Manton yet. Hopefully we might be able to persuade him to come down in the summer, but he's, he's came to Whitsbury on a couple of occasions. And yeah, it's been fantastic and fascinating um, getting to know the great man. You know, it's, uh, we've had some, some great evenings up at Manchester United. and I'm not a Man United fan, but it... It definitely makes my life easier when they when they do well, when you've got to make a telephone call about the horses the next morning. But um, he's he's um, clearly loves his racing and is, as you know, very knowledgeable. And um, it's his release, I think, from the, the pressures of the daily pressures of, of doing the job that he does so well. Viewers will know that you are a QPR fan, and there was a very eventful match for QPR Manchester City, for, for championship decider at the time when Sir Alex Horse, I'm from Govan, was running at Worcester. Just, just talk us through that. Well, that, that was an extraordinary day. This, this horse behind us here, I'm from Govan, um, uh, by Fram, not surprisingly, and uh, Govan being where Sir Alex was, was brought up. This, um, this horse made his debut in a bumper at Worcester, and uh, as the race started, QPR were leading Man City 2-1 in the decider of last year's um, Premier League, and by the time the race had finished, the Man, Man City had scored the two goals, but luckily our horse won, so at least Sir Alex uh, did win a trophy on that occasion. Perhaps not the one he was looking for, but he didn't go home empty-handed on that day. East today, this side, I'm from Govan, eases to the front, but that might be all Alex Ferguson has to cheer about as Manchester City strike very late at the Etihad. I'm from Govan, from East today. Baker's dozen fact number five may take you by surprise. Did you know that George is quite an accomplished long distance athlete? Well, I love my sport. I follow a lot of sports and I, I play a lot of cricket. Um, 
some people might be surprised to know that I've actually run seven London marathons. Uh, not that recently. The, um, the, the physique now is a bit too lunched, um, well lunched for, for that. But I, I did run, I think 3.33 was my best time. Uh, my worst time was over six hours when I broke down at Tower Bridge and struggled over the line. But yeah, no, it was good fun. Good fun getting yourself in a position to be fit enough to, to do it. And I do understand this ridiculous thing that people say, you know, they, people retire and then come back and run it the next year. It's, it is very alluring. And um, but yeah, who knows? Maybe I've got one more left in me. Fact six can hardly be matched. How many trainers, owners, jockeys and horses share the same name? Introducing George Baker. He's behind us, the yeah. animal. Great bit of poem. I mean, it caused a real sort of, you know, good stir, didn't it? It was I, when Harry Finley came up with the idea. I have to admit, I thought, oh Lord, this is um, this this could end in um, tears. And it did take him 17 runs to win. He he ran very well in a race at Royal Ascot on I think about his third run, and that meant that he was very high in the handicap. It took an awful long time for him to get down to a, a mark that he could win off. But um, he then. Once he got his head in front, he, it, the story sort of just grew and grew. And we had the, the wonderful day at Leicester where George Baker the jockey did ride George Baker the horse, so allegedly trained by George Baker, me. So, yeah, a good day. And um, the sco story went completely sort of global. I had the, the Melbourne Age ring me, the San Francisco Times, the Straits Times, and it was a, a good, fun story. Where did it all begin? Baker's Dozen Fact 7 reveals what George was up to prior to the lure of a turf. I kept trying to make a fortune in the city and uh, failed. I um, presided over the downfall of Bearings. It wasn't completely my fault. I think other people were involved in that. But uh, yes, I guess if that hadn't happened, I'd probably still be in the city now shouting down telephones. And Bearings was the oldest merchant bank in the world. It was a job for life. And I went racing at weekends and adored it. But I never, ever conceived of training at Whitsbury and then Manton in those days. And were you a manic wheeler dealer? <laughs> I, I was, uh, I enjoyed my time there, but I, I better tell you the quick story about um, how when I was at BZW, this is one of the reasons I, I definitely don't work in the city anymore. The, the oil analyst stood up in the morning and said that uh, the crude oil price was going up through the roof and that everybody in all their sectors should be long of crude oil stocks. And I was market making in Scandinavian shares at the time. And rather than buying a conventional share, I, I went off piste and, and bought a, a strange company that I thought would um, would do well. <sighs> Three days later, the crude oil price was through the roof. There was high-fiving on the trading floor, apart from in my corner of the trading floor. And I rang up my mate in Copenhagen and said, um, what's going on with this on with this company? It doesn't seem to be reacting to the crude oil price. And he said, well, George, yeah, I'll find out about it. He rang me back and said, George, fantastic company, brilliant management. This company will definitely go places three olive oil refineries in Tuscany. So that's why I probably don't work in the city anymore. Number eight of my baker's dozen involves George's wife, Candida, who plays a vital role in the business. She's responsible for sourcing and purchasing the talent under George's care, as well as forming syndicates such as the Hot to Trot Syndicate. Horse racing is essentially fun, albeit expensive fun. It's therefore vital that the owners get the very best enjoyment value from their investment. We spend most of our lives disappointing owners because, by definition, there are many more losers and winners in a horse race, obviously. So, yes, I mean, you're quite right. It's got to be fun. And we love having people here. It's genuinely open house for our owners. And without this wanting to sound too much like an advert, I mean, it really is such an important part of it. You know, people who are kind enough to support us, they really deserve to have a lot of fun. They're doing this rather than having six season tickets at Chelsea or a fast car or a boat on the south coast. If they've made the choice to have a horse here with, with us, we, we've got to make sure it's enormous fun for them. Baker's Dozen Fact number 10 may come as another surprise. Let's hear about George Baker the jockey. Not the jockey George Baker, but this George Baker. This picture's pretty important. Here is the man himself. This is George Baker, Bill Smith, great rider of yesteryear, Steve Smith Eccles, Alice Plunkett here, there's Richard Rowe, Alex Hammond, and the backside of Luke Harvey. But in the foreground here, this is probably with about three circuits to go, George. This is your golden moment in the saddle in a charity race at Plumpton. I, I had one ride in a charity race. I retired immediately. I am and was then an appalling rider. Better to leave it to the experts. And uh, that is on the first circuit. And I think Simon Holt was doing the commentary and he said that Brazil or bus takes George Baker, or George Baker takes Brazil or bus to the front. It was completely the other way around. And by, by the time we came around the next time, I was tailed off by a mile and um, got off and retired immediately. But um, a good, fun photograph to have. 
The Baker horses travel far and wide to win races, but in his carefree pre-racing days, George Baker was a bit of a rebel without a horse, seeking the passion of the open road. I rode a motorbike back in the, the early 90s from Saigon to Hanoi through Vietnam, which was a great experience. Um, this was after the demise of Bering's Bank, and I went to live in Saigon for a few years, had a wonderful time out there. And one of the things I did was, um, the country was just opening up, and I rode a motorbike from, as I said, from Saigon, now known as Ho Chi Minh City, all the way up to Hanoi. And uh, it's an awful long way, God, in miles, I'm not sure, but it's, it's many, many miles. And it hadn't been done before for, for a very long time. The country was, was only just opening up and you were meant to report into police stations every night in, when I was living in, in Ho Chi Minh City. And I decided one day just to, to get on the bike and go up Highway 1 and, and see how far I could get and got all the way to Hanoi. And it was a magical, magical trip. It took me about three and a half weeks. Um, and then some other fellow did it about four years later and wrote a very funny book, a brilliant book, saying that he was the first man to do it. <laughs> so I forgot to write the book, but I had the trip. Teamwork is an indispensable factor in a successful racing stable and a highly significant role in George Baker Racing is played by both Patrick and Valerie Murphy and Leo too. Well myself and Candid as you know go off to the sales and buy all the horses and we've got uh, you know the pressure's on us as well now we've got to buy these horses that Pat and George are able to obviously train in and win the big races so We'll find one hopefully soon, if we haven't got some already. We've got some lovely two-year-olds this year, um, some nice ones at the breeze up, so um, the ones we've got, yeah, we're, we're very pleased with them. Uh, the pressure's on a bit more now, and uh, we just need to up, up the, the grade of horses, and hopefully that, that they will come now over the next few years. Is he a good man to work for? Uh, he's not bad, he's all right. He takes that for dinner quite a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, he's not bad. <laughs> And so to our final Baker's Dozen Nugget, as the trainer reveals the stars to look out for in the months ahead. Belgian Bill, who's come so close, he was very, he got beaten only inches, didn't he, in the Britannia a couple of years ago. Came good at Kempton, won a couple of races, so there are still some good prizes to be won. What, what's the plan for him? Well, the plan for him is, uh, he was in Dubai this winter, he was a bit unlucky out there. His first race out there, he, he got nearly brought down, basically, and then the second time he just didn't let himself down on the tapata that Ryan Moore said was riding pretty firm on that occasion. He's had a good roll, haven't you, old boy? Uh, he's been a star. He's been with us from the beginning, taking us to lots of good places. He's run very well in Turkey on a couple of occasions, um, ran well in a big race in France. You know, he's, he's just been a standard bearer. He's a horse that has taken us to all the big meetings. He deserves a big one. Whether sort of Anno Domini is catching up, I don't know. You know, he, he ran well in a, won a couple of races at Kempton at the back end of last year. We're freshening him up now for I think probably the Hunt Cup will be the plan with him. So that's the way we're going with him. OK, well, he's run well at Ascot before. Now, who else are we going to see? I know we're going to see Hugh. And oh, Boom, Boom Shakalaka, Shakalaka who's, who you've door, been, yeah. um, well, globetrotting, classics abroad and everything like that. Obviously, so you, you, he showed some very good form as a two-year-old. Yes, he, he started off at, at Brighton in what looked like quite a lowly maiden, but that actually turned out to be a, a pretty hot race. He then won his maiden at Newmarket and then went on from there to to win a listed race in Maison Lafitte and went back to Maison Lafitte, was third in a group two and was third in the Horace Hill here. So went off into the winter with a mark of 108 and the plan is uh, the German Guineas and then hopefully Royal Ascot and beyond. But he showed last year as a two-year-old that he was a very hardy horse who took his racing, didn't mind the travelling. So I think, you know, whether he's going to be... Is he a mile or would he get... I think he'll be, he'll be a mile. We'll, we'll stick to a mile, I would imagine. Um, never like to pigeonhole any of the horses, but I would say a mile is where we'll start. And, well, we'll definitely start a mile in the, in the, um, and then move on from there. And Yeah, I mean, if, if he gave us a lot of fun last year and uh, hopefully be a standard bearer of this. And you'll find something, because you are a bit of a globe trotter, so we know that if it doesn't work out over here, you can always go overseas. And where well, is... Where to, well, we might look at this fellow, Ozzy Lewis, part owned okay. by Jim McGrath, your colleague at, um, on At The Races. Uh, Jim has a show on this horse called Aussie Lyrics with I Michael Watt. royalties out of him for yeah, this. I guess we're all there. Yeah. Michael Watt, um, who's had so many good horses, you know, Vinnie Rowe, all those staying horses. Um, so put, put together a syndicate for this horse. Um, Jim, Aussie Jim is in this horse. He won a, a maiden at Lingfield at the, the back end last year, having been fourth in a decent maiden at Leicester. Um, we gave up on him then, put him away and do it. Been patient with him. He'll be ready to run sort of end of May and yeah, nice horse. Like him a lot.
You've got a few of Jim's characteristics, always trying to take a bit of a nibble. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to find, um, we're going to find the humidor. humidor. Now, yeah. humidor, I love these sprinters, and he came so close. He ran a fantastic race in the Nunthorpe. He's he been, did, he did. He's, he's been a star for us. He you know, came to us, mark of 72. Um, he's now up to 107, has been higher. Um, as you say, you know, ran a fantastic race in the Nunthorpe. Um, fourth on that occasion and then ran I think equally well in the Prix de l'Abbé uh, when he was seventh we got the a, a bad draw there he was always playing catch up but basically went past the line on, on, on the bridle and, and might that be the sort of long-term plan again the Abbé yeah he seems to be a horse now who likes just a bit of cut in the ground and obviously long shot in October you're normally going to get that so yeah I mean I, he's going to um, he's going to be traveling around Europe um, but we'll have entries in in the bigger sprint races and yeah i mean the abbe being the obvious sort of end of, end of term plan but you know he's he's been a these all these sprinters they 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 run against each other they beat each other he's beaten several several have beaten him but hopefully his day will come in a big one these are most certainly exciting times for all involved at george baker's new base at manton and a few high profile and group winners would surely be the icing on baker's cake <laughs>